Good evening and welcome to Prime Business with me, Emma Davis. To our stories, government is rejecting suggestions that the new legislative instrument on cement pricing is anti-business and will hurt a lot of manufacturing firms. It follows threats of job layoffs, cutting down on operations by cement manufacturers and product storage. This is coming at a time that the legislative instrument, which is currently before Parliament, will become law in 17 parliamentary working days. Professor Alex Dodu is Director General of the Ghana Standards Authority. These statements, not by this development. Yeah, I'm because that, he's stating story. the reality on the ground. That is not a reality. He's a, that he's is a, not a reality. He's a player. He's a manufacturer. We have an industry that was never regulated. Mm. You begin to regulate and players who have operated calling the shots to the Ghanaian people begin to present a different face. Doc Bishop stated something that why not last year in this political, this because we are an election year. That, that, that is, that is, that is, is the perception brought to that is an I election brought, year. It's factually incorrect. Yeah. I got a copy of the LI. The LI was laid, the 2480, to regulate cement for the first time in the history of Ghana. For the first time in the history of Ghana. The airline was gazetted on the 23rd of November, 2023. It came into force 22nd December, 2023. The committee of which I chair was inaugurated on the 8th of March, 2024. None of this could have been done last year. Indeed, the Ghana Standards Authority Act, the parent act upon which these allies draw their power, was only given presidential assent on the 1st of on the 30th of June, 2022. So these have been consequential to we having a law. I, I want us to be very factual because we are live on Joy, a very descending station. Mm. We used to have one cement manufacturer. For Gassim. years, Gassim, we can mention the name. I mean, they've that, is, earned, that, that is the fact. They've earned that right. Yeah. States, the Republic had a relationship that most people thought Gassim was even government-owned, which is fine. Then we started having new entrants, some of which play by the ball rules, some which do not play by the rules. Companies were located at residential areas, and Makatil residents got in place. There were court cases, but there was no law. Meanwhile, government has been implored to withdraw the ally seeking to control prices of cement products to avert a possible collapse of the cement industry. Speaking to Joy Business on the matter, West Africa Regional Director of CAT International, Apia Fusi Adomako, urged government to take a second look at its policy to avert the looming threats to the industry. Deregulated market, whereby businesses come here, do their, set their prices and compete on quality and on prices. Now that government wants to regulate the price of cement, what it means therefore is that uh, potential businesses that want to come into the market will be scared off of this action by the government. And so they may not come. And some of the current players in the industry, if they find out that they are not making profit as it should require of them, they also may decide to exit the market. And if care is not taken, we may end up going back to the days of a, a giant monopoly, which we all know what happened when the cement market in Ghana was a, a monopoly of a company, which we, we all know their name. And I think it's a fact that it's gasoline. And so I think that government should think again and redraw the ally for the interest of the country and also for consumers as well as businesses. Nigeria has been selected to host the headquarters of the newly established $5 billion African Energy Bank. This decision came after a thorough technical inspection by the African Petroleum Producers Organization and AfriExim Bank, who jointly promotes the African Energy Bank. Reacting to this, energy strategist Dr. Yusi Suleimana said the presence of the African Energy Bank will attract the needed investments to help African countries like Ghana transition easily. 
So the good the good news is I think we are within the same sector. Ghana is, is same West African within the same region in West Africa. And so I believe in Ghana and Nigeria, our similarity, that's why I say they are big brothers. We are we have a lot of things in common. In Nigeria, they have taken huge or uh, they have taken giant steps, and people didn't notice that. Um, when the multinationals were pulling out from their shores, I think Nigeria, they had their locals or their indigenous taking massive steps to, to take advantage of some of the blocks within Nigeria. And if you notice also, we are talking about one of the largest single train globally being set up in Nigeria, in a, a refinery. And a lot of refineries have been, are coming up in Nigeria. So I think Nigeria was a strategical place. How do Ghana benefit? Um, remember, Emma, we are headquartered, I mean, AFTAC is headquartered in Ghana, as a matter of fact. So with AFTAC headquartered in Ghana, we have we, we are a strategical place you know, to be able to take advantage of such an investment when it comes to Nigeria. Though I think Nigeria is going to be huge, it's going to be gained because having a pool, a, a capital such as uh, 5 billion within your shores as a capital pool, though it is not your own money, but so far as it is within your shores, it, build, it builds up your uh, uh, FID in terms of, uh, let's say, foreign direct investment of so, but Ghana can benefit in a way because of the position of AFTAC. And if you should let AFTAC work and work well, I think Ghana will strategically benefit in this kind of investment. Retired World Bank country director and founder of Albert's Haven Farms, Atto Brown, is advocating for increased research and science based support for Ghana's agricultural sector. He also emphasizes the importance of introducing modern agriculture at the basic and senior high school levels to stimulate interest in the sector. Atto Brown spoke with my colleague Denisia Poma Ej during a tour of his all-inclusive farm in an upcoming episode of Food Chain. We can, we can introduce agriculture at this infancy, modern agriculture to all high schools or primary schools in Ghana so that people grow you know, and naturally progress into agriculture without uh, going to aspirations, uh, confusion, mm. and what, what to do with a, a day job or a, a, side, a side, side gig and so, so with on. Your but they, they can go mm -hmm. into agriculture purposefully because they've been, okay. uh, over the years, been associated with agriculture even at school. Okay. Ghana is still an agriculture country, basically, mm. but low productivity agriculture country. So we, we need to raise our game. Mm. You know, we need to raise our game. Um, and I think there are snippets of uh, as little explosions of uh, you know, you see in the middle belt, in Savannah belt, people are doing large scale farm planes, people are going in, uh, livestock, uh, ranching is becoming part of the game. Before, you know, only the Fulanis brought their cattle around, <laughs> but now people are growing cows, you know. Uh, you know, so I think there's, there's a movement, a positive movement in agriculture. I think a bit more resourcing will help, a bit more science-based research mm -hmm. support. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not all about, about money. Me. Okay. It's a information getting the right information to the farm gate will be very important but I, at, at the end of the day we need to increase our size of our farms we need to get more productive and we need to apply more science in, in agriculture catch the full episode of food chain tomorrow saturday at 6 p.m right here on the join news channel and of course a repeat on tuesday at 2 30. Now, Ghana's horticulture industry is faced with myriads of challenges, which include regulations, market access, technology, innovation, sustainable farming practices, among others. But the big question is, how do we navigate these hurdles to harness the full potential of the industry and its expected contribution to the economy? Christine Esnam Atenge is council member of Federation of Association of Ghanaian Exporters, and has been speaking to Joy Business. Most of people assume you're just talking about flowers. However, the industry is quite broad, and then there are a lot of challenges, but we're doing well. Because looking at um, GEPA's data, exports of 2022 and 2023 exceeded $400 million. So there's a lot of strides going on. However, there are a few challenges, like land tenor system, um, we are have, we have to battle with sand weaners and other developers for the land. Also, there are issues with policy and uh, just standards. So we are looking to address all those issues, and we have a lot of policies in place in terms of working together with the 
industry experts and stakeholders and also advocacy to deal with some of these policies. Now, a lot of producers or horticulture experts are part of associations, which we are always talking about. Like for FAGE, is the mother association of all, over 22 huge um, associations who are also like huge associations for other smaller associations. We have trainings, we have um, engagements with um, embassies, we go for international fairs to see what they're going going on, we are bringing markets to Ghana. And we are hoping that with this um, Horticultural Expo, we expose not just Ghana to the international market from our home base, but also the locals should also know about what we're doing. In other news, the country manager of MasterCard Ghana, Bosman Ekufo, has called for awareness campaigns to minimize cybersecurity losses in the digital economy. According to an IBM security report, 95% of cybersecurity breaches occur through human breaches. He says proper infrastructure investments and massive awareness campaigns will reduce risks. He spoke to Joy Business at the MasterCard FinTech Forum. And make strides to champion its digital economy, digital payment systems remain a key part of this transformation. It will also be a key driver in facilitating the continent's vision of a seamless trade. In Ghana, the central bank and other key stakeholders continue to implement policies which will create the enabling environment for growth and innovation. The FinTech Forum, organized by MasterCard, also seeks to advance conversations which will drive innovation. Fulasa de Femi Lawal, MasterCard's country manager for West Africa, noted that the growth of the sector will facilitate socio-economic growth. When you take your mind back to the 2008 financial crisis and the COVID-19 pandemic-induced financial challenge, the fintech played a large role, a huge role, in ensuring that we breach the financial services um, challenge. The gap that was there, the fintech, they breached it. And so for us at MasterCard, we are happy to leverage that agility for us to grow together and create value for the financial services ecosystem. On his part, country director of MasterCard, Bosman Ekufu Kwapong, called for awareness campaigns to reduce cybersecurity losses in the digital ecosystem. It's imperative that we all, as players within the industry, do a number of things. One of it is investing in cybersecurity infrastructure that helps us enhance and prevent cybersecurity issues. The second one is really education, right? And when we talk about education, we look at two things. Internal education, how do we educate our staff so that they are abreast with current trends and they also know how to prevent these issues and then external which is the public how do we educate the public how do we create awareness so that public knows what are the minimum t things that they need to do when they are assessing these platforms the third one is really around understanding how these trends are evolving globally so that we can learn from what, are, what is happening. The forum brought together regulators and players in the ecosystem to discuss innovations in the digital payment sector. Counting and auditing firm KPMG has partnered with the Educational Directorate of the Greater Accra Region to support infrastructure for some selected schools in the region. The move is part of its corporate social responsibility to impact the communities. Senior partner at KPMG, Anthony Sapon, has been speaking at a ceremony to hand over a new ICT lab to the Abelempe Basic School in Accra. Here's more. Commissioning of the factory, the minister praised the implementation of the Planting for Food and Jobs Phase 2 project, which has boosted rice production. The ICT lab is an initiative adopted by auditing firm KPMG to empower young learners with digital skills and basic knowledge in technology. According to KPMG, this is a partnership geared towards improving learning and thereby supporting the students to contribute to economic growth. After a ceremony to hand over the facility to the school, senior partner at KPMG, Anthony Sapon, said this will give opportunity to the students to appreciate the computer skills in their studies. 
when we go to a school, we partner with them over a number of years. So this is a journey started around 2019, investing in various infrastructure like the uh, KG infrastructure, the washroom, and today we are handing over the ICT lab. The importance of it is that it gives opportunity for the learners to be able to begin to imbibe uh, technology and digitization learning, which is part of the generation that they are born into. And that way, uh, we give them the education and be able to build their skills in computer and technology so that when they finish their education, they can really contribute to our nation building in Ghana and the world at large. Headmistress of the school, Enyonam Ajo Dovlote, expressed gratitude to the firm and used the occasion to appeal for more support to make the learning environment conducive for students. These computers will go a long way to help our learners, to equip them, empower them for the future as regarding digital, we being in a digital era, we are supposed to equip the Ghanaian child to be a digital literate. So these computers will give them first-hand opportunity. And KPMG, we are very grateful, truly grateful, and we'll put these resources to very good use, but we still expect more because the school is still in that need of a lot of resources. The CSR project is part of key initiatives by the firm to improve upon its environmental and sustainable governance practices. Now, Central Regional Minister Justina Marigold Asan is urging residents of the Central Region to patronize rice from the newly installed rice milling factory at Asing Ekropong, saying it's of good quality and affordable. Speaking at the commissioning of the facility, the minister highlighted how the patronage of rice from the factory will boost production and incentivize farmers to go into rice farming. There is more in this report. Speaking at the commissioning of the factory, the minister praised the implementation of the Planting for Food and Jobs Phase 2 project, which has boosted rice production through the Koika Rice Value Chain Improvement Project. She emphasized that the Central Agra Rice Initiative symbolizes nourishment and serves as a vital avenue for poverty reduction in the region. The reason it should receive patronage from residents. With the advent of Korea or Koika Rice Value Chain Improvement Project, the region has seen remarkable improvements in rice production as well as the average yield per hectare. We have indeed seen an increase in rice production from 16,246 metric tons in 2021 to 21,430 metric tons in 2023, which is an increase. The region can also boast about 24,641.8 hectares of potential rice fields, which are untapped. I would like to therefore use this opportunity to appeal for more interventions from our development partners and the Ministry of Food and Agriculture to support the region with technical and technological know-how to be able to develop on tapped lands for the production. Deputy Minister for Food and Agriculture, Yao Frimpong Adu, explained some of the interventions government has put in place to improve rice yield. It is gratifying to know that the rice value chain improvement project implemented by Koika and Mofa in the five project districts in the central region has brought about several interventions, including the procurement and distribution of agricultural machinery and equipment, development, production, and distribution of improved seeds, capacity building of farmers on quality seed production and other good agronomic practices, a seed processing facility, rice branding, and ultimately the construction of this beautiful rice milling factory here. These interventions are definitely going to address some of the challenges in the rice sector. Korean ambassador to Ghana, Park Kyung Sik, says the installation of the rice milling factory symbolizes the Korean-Ghana collaboration. Well, this project is a part of uh, to improve the rice value chain in the central region of Ghana, and Korean government invested uh, almost 80 million U.S. dollars for this project. And the final stage 
is uh, this uh, beautiful rice mill here. And uh, another thing is uh, actually inauguration of the brand, uh, Central uh, Agra Rice. It's a very, I think it's very meaningful here. And a symbol of the Korea-Ghana cooperation. To ensure that the facility is put to optimum use, the Ministry of Food and Agriculture says it is putting in place competent managerial structures and has set in motion the process to recruit a facility manager to manage and operate the rice milling factory for profitability and sustenance. The World Bank is set to release some $100 million fund to the Ghana Cocoa Board to support production of cocoa. This is according to the Chief Executive Officer of Cocoa Board, Joseph Wahin Edo. According to him, the funds are meant to rehabilitate some overaged cocoa farms across the country to boost production. Speaking to Joy Business after he visited some farms in the northern part of the central region, Mr. Boahing said a memorandum of understanding has been signed between Cocoa Board, African Development Bank and the World Bank to see the disbursement of these funds we have rehabilitation and then we leave it for the farmers alone. If you are generating only seedlings for farmers to come and then cut all these trees and plant on their own, they cannot. Even getting the planting materials, planting circuits alone, uh, we went to Mr. Tema Cruz farm. 30 acres. If you, are, if you cut 30 acres and you want the farmer to provide planting circuits for 30 acres within one year, he cannot. That's how per the new program under uh, the new dispensation as the microfrado we provide planting material, planting circuits are for free for the farmers. And then we also support them in terms of labor to do the planting. And now extension people, you know, if you increase the extension staff number, you know, it used to be just 400. They are now about 2,000. So instead of one is to 3,000 farmers, now you have one is to 600 farmers. Across the country. So what? Across the country. Across the country. We used to be one is to 3,000. FAO is one is to 500. That's the standard. Mm. Now we've come to one is to 600 under this government, which is very good. That's why, you know, the farmers are praising our extension of CESA because now extension has come very close to the farmers. Are you doing this free of charge to the farmers? You rehabilitate Oh, yes. It's over yes, yes, charge. everything is free. Everything is free. That's how we end the bulletin tonight on Prime Business. I am Emma Davis. But for more news, do log on to myjoyonline.com and be updated. Have a good evening, but please stay for Prime Sports.